Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 41 of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast broadcast. I'm here with Co Reed. Arbo. And I'm here with Griffin. And this is the Rogue Company podcast, bringing you all the news that you need to know about Rogue Company. Dirt Lord is currently, we're recording this on New Year's, like on the New Year's, like not Eve. Yes, the New Year's Eve. So he will not be attending, but that's okay because we're still doing it, guys. It's fine. Uh, but first up here, we are going to talk about possible new rogues that will be coming in the future. So the the new rogues' names are Rody and Dobie or Dobby. Dobby. <laughs> Dobby. Until further information is released. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> give him a sock. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> Dobby. Dobby. So apparently Rhodey's move set is the hot meter. Now tell me if this sounds familiar to anybody out there. Release a pulse that amps up Rhodey and nearby allies, giving them movement speed and healing them based on how full the meter was. Dealing damage. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, dealing damage, downing enemies, and reviving teammates adds bonus charge to your meter. Uh, and then Allegedly, the lore is it came as a shock to the director that the assassin who the fixer recommended ended up being the world famous Rhodey. Her high profile pop star career was a fantastic cover as it provides her access into areas of the world closed to most, and no one would suspect her, no one alive at least. So, the hype meter, okay? There is a couple of things here, like a couple of, of, questions that i have right because you can look at it as like i'm assuming that they're it's either going to have charges or a bar or something similar to like what glimpse has already and i'm assuming there's going to be a baseline that you start with that is going to give x amount of speed boost and then x amount of hp right like tick killing or whatever and as you do damage, down enemies, revive teammates. I'm hoping they add objective stuff in there. Like, so if you're contesting the point or holding the point and, and like strike out, if you're planting or diffusing the bomb in demolition, it adds to your hype meter that they have right here. Uh, so I'm assuming that you're going to be able to max it out to a certain point and then it's going to give full benefits of speed and healing. But do we really need? A movement speed bonus and a healing bonus, like stacked on top of each other like that. Uh, the healing would be enough. <laughs> I don't know about the movement speed because that reminds me of Lancer and Juke in a way, and that movement can get out of hand. People can get broke. Yeah, if you mix that with Lancer's ability, it might get ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine stacking like Dahlia on one of the fast characters and then being able to get that amped on it by a roadie? I mean. And that's the Dolly thing would be a major problem. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, what would the passive ability? Cause like based off of what this says, I would assume that the passive ability would be adding, I'm going to say hop to your hop meter. Like that would, I mean, I guess that would be a passive ability because yeah. you wouldn't normally that would do that. Yeah. yeah. So if you pair with Rody as Dahlia, then what do you realistically gain unless mm. you feed into Rody's hop meter, which would be kind of cool. Like that would be the first pairing where it's like whatever the Dahlia does feeds into the, the, the linked character at that point, which would be kind of interesting. Um, that movement mm. speed though, if this is real, if this is a real like character that's going to be coming, then it is going to be a nightmare. Because, like, you could legitimately, like, get into the match, run as a team, have everybody down everybody, and then you could thirst it. And that's going to uh, add to your hype meter, I'm sure. But since a lot of other things proc on on thirsting people, like uh, replenish things like that, and then revive down teammates. And once that hype meter gets full, then the entire team is moving at breakneck speed around the map. That's going to feel so bad to go up against. And what can make it worse is if, like, if they're all running like real speed teams, like switchblade Lancer, 
Seeker. Any of them. Yeah. yeah. Seeker would do it. Talon. Yeah. Yeah. Just they'll be so fast. I could. Can you imagine? I mean, I want to see how Anvil will hit up on. See, and that. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Right. Like, exactly. Put that slow fuck in there. And let's see what he does. Yeah. <laughs> and and my question also is like this hot meter, like if it's something that you feel right, or if it's if it's like individual pips, kind of like the way that jukes uh, juke boots work, uh, that would be okay, right? You would have like three levels. We'll say just for example, three levels of it, and when you get to the highest level of it, that's <clears throat> that's when you gain the most. Heal, tick healing and speed out of it. If it's a bar type system, kind of like Glimpse has, then you're going to have to clearly define on that bar the levels that you need to reach to be able to get to that next level of of healing and stuff. She's going to be a walking um, regeneration field, which is okay. I think I think there should yeah. be a radius around her. Yeah. Oh, there has to be, right? Like there has, has to, be. to be. It can't. It can't be like the whole map. Your whole team's constantly get. It has to be like a twenty meter radius or something. I like mean, that. it does say nearby, but like okay. I do feel like at the end of the day, she doesn't need both of these. Yeah, she just shouldn't be That's granting. Okay. Yeah, she shouldn't be granting need to work the like team Lucio's. movement. Yeah, or healing at the same time, like. It needs to be either or, but I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna lean more to healing. Honestly, they can't though. They can't make it to where it swaps between healing and speed no, because no, no, then no. it's clear it's clear that they ripped off Overwatch. Then yeah, I don't want them to swap. I just want them to be one or the other. Either you choose oh, movement speed, okay. Like like, like like instead of them just giving the character both. Like I, I'm leaning harder on healing because we need a new healing character, and I feel like that would be a really cool healing character. Yeah, but, absolutely. The movement speed, again, I feel like that's. Is, I think that's going to cause another, you know, game issue. It'll be an exploit. Clearly, it's going to be an exploit. Like that's just what's yelling at my face right now. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to well, be abused. <laughs> here's my issue with it as well. This is a game that's been the whole time that's been out. It's been pretty much relying on your support characters being able to revive. Yeah, easier. Now, if you have a character that heals like a over time effect or something, then that's going to make every gunfight that you get into while that's active on their team so much harder for you. Yeah, for the, sure. The way that the TTK works, the way the guns work, the way everything works is is to where you're not receiving healing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I wondered if the game would even be able to keep up. You know, like each like character picking up movement and everything, being able to pick up speed and other like, would the latency just be even worse? Uh, I'm sure that would it wouldn't help anything. <laughs> I'm sure that it would <laughs> would not help things whatsoever. You know, but we we're have already server issues in this fucking game. Yeah, yeah right. we're already dealing with. You're mm. wanting to add a character that like grants your characters more movement, which yeah, and w- with this ability plus life drain stacked on top of it is going to make like chalk and characters like that anvil yep. perfect example just, feel that much just, worse to go against trench yeah, anvil they, chalk any of those guys they yeah. can be tanks and just be the riding force while that person just rises in the background just now, rides behind them here here is how you balance it in my opinion though if you have it as an aoe effect that affects everybody in that area whether it be enemies or friendlies, where like if you're in a gunfight and and you're in a close quarters gunfight with with three versus three whatever, and you pop the ability and it heals and gives everybody the speed boost, then it balances itself out in that in that moment. You know what I mean? I don't think that they would do that, but that's one way that it would be cool to to have a, a way to balance it because if you don't. Unless they plan on removing life drain, okay? And that's something that I've been toying with a little bit myself is like, what if these problem perks that's been in the game for a while just went away and was reworked into something completely different? Where, Whereas like replenish and um, it's not sleight of hand, but um, quick hands, right? Quick hands, yeah. yeah. Quick hands 
at a high tier, if you go in and rework quick hands, then that effectively supplements replenish in a massive way and also encourages a skill gap in that moment. So you could absolutely do that. If you reworked Life Drain to be something like Life Rip from Paladins, where instead of you gain a, a bulk amount of HP back when you down someone, it works kind of like how Umbra and Vi's passive ability currently works, where you leech life off of them as you are shooting them, but it's not enough to like fully affect the gunfight. Now, if they do something like that, and, and if that's planned, then this makes more sense in context, right? But it's not going to feel good when you're going against all of these people that have these legendary versions of Life Drain that are getting tick healing. And when they go down, you compare this with a Saint and a Dahlia, and nobody's going to go down. And even if they go down and the abilities active, they're not going to bleed out. They're going to continue to gain HP until the gunfight's over. So it's going to turn into whichever team shows up with the most amount of people with the most amount of either armor or life drain is going to win the gunfight. That's not going to feel good. That's going to make that an instant band character in rank. That's going to make it. <clears throat> Every time. Yep. Yes. That's going to make get, it bad in a big way. I guess it really just depends on how close you need to remain around Rody. Yeah, that's true. The AOE does. And like to make it worth it, you're going to have to make it a pretty large size. Yeah, you're going to have to. I mean, you're going to grant them movement speed. It's going to have to be large. You can't have it just like a 10 meter radius. Like that's just running by her. Yeah. Say 30 would be a good a good starting like the same, point. Yeah. Like the same as Dolly Go as up or down from there, depending on how it works out. Yeah, I agree. And here's another thing, too, with the movement speed thing. If that is something that's realistically going to come into it. The one thing that I that drove me absolutely insane on Paladins was when you're playing with a character that has a specific movement speed and then you get healed or something and it buffs your movement speed and you're not expecting it to. And in that moment, yes. in that moment, you're aiming down side or something. Yes. And you're trying to shoot someone, yes. but you're moving faster than normal. So you're not tracking yeah. correctly. And you're, so, yeah, because you're not used to that. It's because you pick up the speed, and you're just like, whoa, what's happening, dude? Yeah. <laughs> so I could see the speed thing work as a positive and also a negative. And to me, I can see myself getting frustrated because the roadie kicks the ability in, and I'm shooting someone, and now I'm running over the top of them. Now I'm I'm aiming too far to one side because I'm I'm strafing too too much, like too fast compared to how I would normally strafe. So it's a yeah. very it's a very, I like the character concept. I just don't know how in execution this is going to go over in a third person, quote unquote, tactical shooter like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, so. could, just be, you could just accidentally walk into her little radius or whatever and just start walking fast and just mess your whole mojo up and then get, or get lined up in somebody's shot, one or the other. Yeah, right. <laughs> So the next little leak thing that we have here is uh, some more information on Rhodey and Dolby. So Rhodey's skins apparently are Jackal, Mastery 1 and 2, Rhodey T1Y Silver 01, which I'm assuming is the recolor. And I'm assuming that Rhodey is going, well, no, Rhodey, based on that background, Rhodey wouldn't be a member of Jackal at that point, but it's fine. Uh, the items are going to be, of course, the Mastery Avatar, Animated Avatar, Jackal Avatar, Mast maybe that's the the spy. Like, that's the thing from the narrative event. You know what I mean? And, yeah, because, I mean, it's a Jackal skin. It even says yeah. Jackal. It's yeah. Got all the Jackal so, stuff, too. Right. So, like, she's, she's the betrayer, maybe. Yeah, right. So, one huh. thing that, that I thought was interesting about this screen, though, was the dual boyer, right? So, in the last episode of Broadcast, we talked about the... Um, Deal wielding SMGs. You know, this has been something that's been in the game files for quite a while, and it came back up recently. We covered it in the last episode of Broadcast, and this looks like the upgrade path specifically for the uh, dual SMGs or whatever. So the level one upgrade would increase the magazine size, which why would you want to do that in something that you dual wield? 
The level two would be increase the hip fire accuracy. That makes sense. And level three is decrease reticle bloom. All of that says hip fire only, right? Because there's no sprint, like yeah. sprint to fire. There's no sprint to ADS. There's none of that stuff. It's all hip fire accuracy and reticle bloom. And of course the magazine size. So unless it's going to be weapons that have like 10 ammo in each one, for a total of 20, then it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to have an increased magazine size for dual wielding weapons. But I don't know, man. I'm not a game dev. I'm going to have to call somebody else, you know? Um, and then Dobby. There's no information about Dobby yet, just only their names being mentioned. Uh, and that's kind of like, you know, when we had all those leaks a while back where it was like Pumpkin and... Um, I don't, I don't remember what all the names are, but like, you know, this character's code name for the devs was this until they actually named them, whatever. So, um, I don't know how true this is. Uh, you know, this is something that Exiled sent us and, um, was saw, I'm assuming on Reddit, since it's got the Reddit thing underneath it, but, um, there's been a lot of like leaks that have come out. Uh, especially the next leaker that we're going to get to here, that is something that is very reliable to a degree. So this may be, you know, this may be some interesting concepts that come out. All right, next up we have the uh, possible new weapon gadget. I don't know exactly what it is. Just so everyone is aware, this was uploaded by this individual right here. The same as the last episode with all the map leaks. I did not know anything about this. I did not have anything to do with this. The broadcast does not have anything to do with any of this leak stuff. We're just reporting on it just so everyone is aware, right? So, I mean, Meltdown looks like it's uh, an active volcano at this point, right? Electric launcher work in progress. I mean... Look at that goo. Look at that area. It was like 10 meters. Yeah, oh. right. And it does like comparable to incendiary damage. I would say maybe less than incendiary damage, right? Oh, I mean, is it in the area or do they remain like that for the duration? I think it's just like an AOE effect, right? Like well, as long as you're in the dissipate. area effect. Yeah. I mean, I, unless, I mean, it's like a glue tar type substance. So, um, maybe if you hit someone with it, it sticks to them. That's why I'm asking. If it, that's so, then it's really strong because, like, they were down to like 5 HP or 10 HP yeah, on right. the first time. So, if that's the case, then whoosh. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to feel good at all. Um, Especially if they hit you with it. Oh, yeah. God. And it's, it's interesting that this is coming out coming out of a weapon. It makes me think that like, is this going to be an ability or is this going to be a gadget? Or surely to God, they're not going to put a weapon in the game like this, right? Like, could you imagine going to assault rifles and seeing this thing and like, oh, you can master it so your entire team can run it and it's fine. That would be <laughs> yeah, exactly. it needs to be a gadget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. It needs to be a gadget. Or it, it would work even better for a rogue ability. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Yeah, there you go. That'd be like a great it like, like it shuts down like trip mines and stuff and stuff. Let's areas. let's if if they they showed it with Phantom, let's get rid of her fucking gas thing and then her have that do damage and reveal people. Oh, that would be interesting. Dude, yeah, that, smoke. Her ability is only good at blocking off doors, really. Yeah. I mean, it also blocks Fixer. He can't see through the nano either. That that's the one counter to his thing. But but how many p? How many times have you thrown that nano smoke to block a door off and fuckers is just charge right through it with a shotgun? Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not that good. That's why I don't play Phantom that much. I I don't. I don't really like her fucking ability that much. Yeah. Her passive ability is better than her actual ability. Yeah, that's the only me. reason to really run her. Yeah, I agree. Um, I do think that it would be very interesting as an ability like that. And like just by saying that, this would this is something that I think like it just came to mind, right? 
So Dima's passive ability is whenever you hit someone with grenades, then it reveals them, right? Yep. Why don't they rework his passive ability and then just bake that uh, that passive ability into tracker rounds? Yeah. I mean, that would be really cool if you use a gadget on someone. Like, because... It it would make it it would make using gadgets that much more since the the spam is gone and also the damage has been adjusted for the gadgets that you still get another benefit out of it because you see a ton of people that don't run gadgets because like well I can just upgrade my weapon and I'm not going to down them unless I upgrade the gadget all the way so why not just forego the gadget and then just upgrade the weapon it makes sense you know. Demon's passive made sense when there was less rogues in the game and less ways to reveal people. Yeah, I agree. One hundred percent. Now that we're where we're at, it, it would make sense to rework that because he's a core character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I one thing that I'm wondering, um we had a an ability or a gadget that was introduced in Call of Duty recently that does electrical tech damage over time. And Shock that baton. Yes, and that thing, whenever you get hit by it, it forces you to fire your weapon uncontrollably, right? So I'm not saying that Rogue has to rip that off, but it should do some secondary function, in my opinion. Whenever, That'd be really cool. Yeah, if it's shoot, if it's firing the weapon while they're you know in in the shock for the duration, that's fine. If it's they can't fire their weapon while they're in the shock because they tense up and their fingers not on the trigger, then that makes sense. Like it should do. If it's not going to reveal, if it's not going to have a reveal uh, function to it, then it should add something extra because you got tear gas. It slows and disorients. You've got the EMP that EMPs you, of course, and disorients you. Uh, you have incendiary, which just does incendiary, like all the lethal gadgets do all the lethal gadget shit. Um, but it would be nice if they would add a secondary function to something like this. And like, it doesn't have to have multiple charges. I think like one or two charges for this thing would be perfect. It doesn't need to have three or five because then you're getting into like Dima slash uh, switchblade territory at that point where it's like you get the rocket, you get three pools of fire, you get the Merv launcher, you get three, you know, balls that come off of it that explode. Like keep it, you know, keep it more consistent. And if you're going to add more charges to it, if it is an ability or whatever, then make it to where once you start expending it, it goes on cooldown once you put it away or uh, make it to where it does less tick damage over time. And it has a secondary function where it either causes them to fire, causes them not to fire. It does some other thing to them. And I think that I, I think that a lot of people um, don't understand how good a lot of the utility in Rogue Company can actually be. Like EMP grenades, things like that. They just want to run and gun, run and gun, run and gun. But all that other utility is really, really, really good, like flashbangs. You throw a flashbang and get it anywhere near anybody, and it flashes them regardless. So the utility's good. Put more utility in it. Make it a little bit more tactical as opposed to, well, I'm just going to shoot my goo all over the place, and it's going to electro electrocute everybody. And like... um Trophy systems are underutilized at this point. Yes, I agree. They're they're so valuable, and people rarely buy them, especially yeah, when they cancel everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially whenever it gets rid of abilities, like that is massive. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. get rid of a rocket rocket knife, a Dima thing, dude. Yeah. It, if I'm not mistaken, it'll even fucking bust a, a flying sword out of the sky. Yeah, absolutely. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that is something that we possibly have uh, to look forward to. This may be, you know, Dobby's thing. You know, this may be a future rogue on down the road. Like we've we've only gotten two rogues realistically in 2022, uh, and, and we're that's what we're fixing to get into. So it would be nice if like if we can get all the core issues with the game sorted out. If they up the actual appearance rate of the rogues that would be incredible like new rogues into it but if i have to pick let's get the game running good 
before we get going into some of this other stuff, you know? So please, please fix it. I mean, we've been screaming about these motherfucking servers since this game released. So let's, let's do something about that. Let's stop every update having five more fucking bugs. Yeah. Agreed. Right. Or the same bug that they got rid of four updates ago. Yeah, right. Like, give me the hit markers that I earned or I deserve when I'm hitting people. <laughs> like, why is that I'm shooting people and I'm getting a little explosion where I'm hitting their body or whatever and I'm not getting damage? Like, yeah. what? Why does that happen? Or like when I'm running around the corner and somehow I've taken two or three shots after I've already run around the corner and then I'm down? Yeah, I know. Or right. any of those. Like, or the engagement. Like earlier, like, I downed a Lancer. I shot that bitch through the wall. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's absurd, man. It's absurd. So this is going to be the meat of the episode, right? We're not going to do a community section. We did this last year. We're going to dive right into it this year once again with a 2022 year-end review for Rogue Company. So I've gone through all of the updates from their website, and I've compiled a list here of when the update was, uh, what the name of the update was on their website, and also the major key things that was brought into it. And there's a couple of things that I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth about because like, there's stuff in here that they said they introduced that I've never seen it ever come up in a game. Uh, so we're going to start here. I started the list with December the 2nd, 2021. So matchmaking improvements, right? Open match was subbed in as the preferred matchmaking system, splitting the players into three tiers based off of their MMR. Matches are created to try and spread the MMR across all players in a match to give it the appearance of an even matchmaking. So basically what that article said, and you can go back and read all these on the website. If you go to the website and if you go to the news tab, you can scroll down and click more news and it'll go back, I think, until their very first upload that they had regarding Rogue Company. Um, and this goes back right here, December the 2nd, matchmaking improvements. So what they decided to do was like their match. They do have a matchmaking system in Rogue Company, and it is somewhat a skill based matchmaking in the same sense that like if you have a team of four players, then it's going to try to put someone that is a third tier player, which we'll say third tier is the highest. It's going to try to put a third tier player on the team, two second tier players, and a first tier player on the team to try to give the appearance of a balanced matchmaking system. But inevitably what that does is the third tiers and even the second tiers get frustrated that they have first tier players in their matches. Like they created a matchmaking problem by adding in this weird legacy matchmaking system that they had way back in the day that honestly makes no sense for for current games for modern games um and with the argument for skill-based matchmaking and all that good stuff i feel like in certain game modes like quick play it should just be that it should and 6v6 tdm you should just be able to jump in frag out not really worry too much about anything but when it comes to the other core game modes like strike out demolition rank things like that it should be a very very strict matchmaking system and i don't think that their open match is actually good for rogue company when it comes to their core game modes especially ranked because why would you want to get placed as a tier three and feel like you have to do the extra handling when it comes to the other three people that are on the team. Or if you get two tier threes and two tier ones, then you're mm. splitting the responsibilities of babysitting the tier ones. And it just doesn't feel good. It feels like you're having to do more than realistically you should have to do in a competitive environment. Everybody should be able to pull their own weight. And <clears throat> if the match was laid out to where, it's a 1v1 situation and the tier 1s fought against each other and then the tier 2s fought against each other and then the tier 3s, then it would make sense. But it doesn't work that way. Normally, the tier 3s take out the tier 1s and that doesn't really make for a balanced match whatsoever. It just throws a wrench in it. It feels bad. So their matchmaking improvements that they made are working, but they're not good. Just because they're in there doesn't mean that they're good whatsoever. 
And that's like they haven't made any changes to matchmaking or anything since December the 2nd of 2021. And people's been complaining about the matchmaking for over a year now at this point. Ever since this came out, it was quiet for a little while. And then if you go back and look, people started complaining about it because people started coming into the game, especially once it left the closed beta state or the open beta state. So People are complaining about it more and more. You get people that just download the game and hop into Demolition, and you've got a seasoned player in there playing with some people that have been playing it for six months to a year, playing with a new person. It just doesn't feel the best, you know? On December the 13th, they did the Battle Zone preview event with Rogue Company creators. It was on the PTS server where certain Rogue Company content creators got on there. And they play tested the premier game mode, Battle Zone. Battle Zone has only been in the game for a year, and it feels like it's been in the game for an eternity. So the December 14th update was the Umbra update, and in that update we got Umbra, of course, and the new LTM Battle Zone. That was the most um, I don't know. That was the biggest changes that came with that specific update, which makes sense. It was right before Christmas. They didn't want to throw a whole bunch of new stuff in there, this, that, and the other, to kind of throw a wrench in the system. Um, makes sense. It's better than what we got this year. I'll say that. So our first update of the new year was January the 11th with the, ro uh, the, with the Glimpse update. So in this update, we got a new Rogue, which of course was Glimpse. We got the announcement of the Project Saint initiative. We got a weapon UI update where it shows what the weapon name is and also what the fire rate is in parentheses next to the weapon. Uh, the DMR cross... Uh, crosshair was changed to the circle with the dot in it, which thank God that they added an option in there for that. They added the armor feedback. Whenever you're shooting someone, it shows if they have armor and whenever it is at a decayed state and a broken state. So that was a really useful addition. In my opinion, they added blocking players, which really doesn't block anybody. It just allows them to not contact you anymore. Ugh, you know, uh, and then we got a couple of map changes with Canals, Wanted, Vice, and Favelas. They made it to where you could get on top of like the statues. You could get on top of certain boxes and certain areas of the maps to give the, the maps a little bit more verticality. Which, I mean, if you get on top of a statue, you don't have any cover. So why would you want to be on top of a statue? I don't, I don't get it. So on the January 18th update, we got the 2022 support system update. So this is where they updated the player support system through high res support. Uh, whenever you pull this up, it basically shows that like, hey, if you have issues, you can reach out to high res support. Like this falls on the tail of the great Rogue Company Massacre Christmas Massacre, right? The great Rogue Company Christmas Massacre, where they went on their whole you know, hiatus with the game and left a bot to run everything and people's accounts got banned left and right. You know, there was people complaining about it on Twitter. There was people complaining about it on Reddit, rightfully so. And there's so many people that got their accounts banned. Some people got them back. Some people didn't. This was their way of fixing that situation by saying, hey, don't contact us even though we're the developers of the game, contact high res support so that they can go and look into the situation that's going on. There's still several people that haven't gotten their accounts back yet. So it's a feels bad at the end of the day. Um, on the February 4th, there was a post that was announcing the human backfill update. This was something that the developers hopped up towards the end of 2021 about, oh, we're going to introduce this, you know, amazing feature because the bots didn't work out called human backfill. But human backfill was delayed. Unf this was the quote from the article. Unfortunately, despite the strenuous efforts of our team and further testing on the PTS, we realized that human backfill was not quite ready. Therefore, we have decided to delay the release of human backfill. So they announced it. I think it was during the glimpse update um, or not long after the glimpse update. They did PTS testing, realized that it wasn't ready because they couldn't figure out how to make it work. And then they released a statement. And that's something that you'll see going through this. The amount of communication that the developers had with us at the first half of 2022 was amazing. 
and then something happened and everything fell apart. On February the 8th, we got the Neochrome update, so they included uh, content for Rogue Mastery on level 6 and 7. We did get the new map Meltdown. We got the Simul Media, which is the ad system where you could get reputation for ads. Um, we got the health bar and armor improvements where they changed the, the health bar where it's slanted. And then you have that little health bar over the top of it that shows the armor that you have. And they've made some changes to it here and there, uh, but it, it's still a thing. The HUD update for Gadget Toggle was introduced in that update as well, along with ranked demolition, reducing the you know first to win from eight down to seven, which was crazy. That they that they did that where it was like oh you have to get eight it made the the matches last forever but they fixed it I guess if that's what you want to call it I thought I thought that that was interesting because in 2021 they tinkered with the rounds to win in everything so much that they finally was like it's six in casual it's seven in ranked it is what it is so. March the 8th, we got the Rambo King Cobra update, which gave us the Rambo skin, the Rambo event. That's when human backfill was actually added into the game. They increased the team party size from four to six so that you could queue with a full team in the 6v6 game modes, except for on Switch, unfortunately. Safe in the sky, no damage while in the planes. So whenever you respawn uh, or stayed in the planes for an extended amount of time in the skirmish map specifically, people were getting shot out of the planes. They got rid of that damage. And then bans on notice. This is what I was wanting to talk about for a second here. Notification that action has been taken against someone you reported. So this was on March the 8th. So if we go back to the March the 8th update, right, which is right here, year two, season one, Rambo King Cobra update. If we scroll down here, to right here bans on notice as with any game we are sure that our players have encountered unsavory toxic and or just outright unfair players while we have long had a report feature our players often often ask us if reporting a player is meaningful beginning with the rambo king cobra update we will notify you when action is taken against players you've reported Keep up the good fight in making our community the best it can be. Has anybody received a message from anybody that says, oh, that person that you reported, they got banned or yeah. they got timed out or whatever? Has anybody received this message? Mm -mm. This is insane that they have something that they supposedly added into the game but it's just not there. It just it either doesn't work or it's just not in the game because I've never received anything. It's insane, dude. It is absolutely insane. So on the March 16th, uh, we did have a post here, an update on Rogue Company, which was a letter from Dale Flowers about the current state of the game and the glaring issues the game had at the time. So I'm going to pull this up real quick. Um, give me one second, because the way that it's set up here, which was March the 16th. The 16th. Yeah, right here it is. Okay. So this is what that letter said, more or less. <laughs> Uh, recently appointed executive producer of Rogue Company. Some of you may have already seen me around Reddit or Discord as Xenon, mm -hmm. trying to track down some of Rogue Company's biggest technical issues and even successfully resolving them from time to time. I know that year two has run up against some challenges in the first two updates, having some major issues marring the overall gameplay experience. While we were working, while we've worked uh, quickly to resolve those issues, that isn't good enough for us, and we'll continue to strive to discover and address issues before Rogue Company updates get into your hands. Because the King Cobra update, the Rambo update, was a disaster for a lot of people. Like a huge disaster for a lot of people. And also what they were talking about here is like 
the mobile version of Rogue Company because that's what he keeps bringing up. Uh, I've seen responses regarding our Rogue Company mobile project suggesting it has impacted our release quality. While that would be a convenient scapegoat for us to use, it's simply not true as a separate team is working on Rogue Company mobile. So they're, they're going in there talking about the server issues, about how he's tried to get the server issues, blah, 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 blah. But this was an update on everything that's going on. How many terrible updates have we had in the last three or three to five updates that we've had where the developers have said nada, zilch, zero? Nothing has been said whatsoever. Hey, we're sorry that everybody bought the, pa the battle pass for the um whatever the fashion show battle pass was i can't think what it's called and and you couldn't access the battle pass it just wasn't online or we're sorry that people are downloading the game to get walking dead skins and you just can't get them or you download or you purchase the doll face dahlia skin and it just doesn't have a hitbox or anything nothing has come out there's been nothing that's been said from the developers so i want like this right here an update on Rogue Company, March the 16th, getting close to a year at this point, you know, give or take, uh, nothing. We haven't got anything like this from the developers. And this happens all the way up until about the midpoint of the year. On April the 7th, they change, they made changes to ranked, and you'll see a pattern here. So April the 7th, they released an article that says changes to ranked, where they're going to change it from 4v4 down to 3v3. And then on April the 8th, we get the RCCS announcement, and the roadmap was revealed, where they're going to do a 3v3 tournament format specifically for the RCCS. So to me, like, obviously... Whoever was in charge of the RCCS over there, not going to mention any names, thought it would be better to be played in a 3v3 format as opposed to a 4v4 format, and they made an entire change to how the, the core fundamentals of ranked works based specifically off of a request from someone that's running the competitive side of it. Why does one person have that much power? That's running the competitive side of it that no longer exists. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, yeah, we can go ahead and not mention names, but uh. yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't even know why this is a discussion. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Look, Dirt was supposed to say it. He's not here to say it. I'm gonna say it. I'll, I'll go and cl I'll clip it and put it in there or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so on the April the twelfth update, we did get the covert ops update. So in this update, we got the weapon and perk rarity colors. So you know, yellow, green, blue, purple, all that stuff. They did the entire perk re rework for all of the rogues, increased the perk count from six to eight. Then they added the new perks, energized gunsmith, volatile shredder rounds, crack shot, bulletproof, and restock. They also introduced the speed and toughness system, and they made it to where abilities recharge globally. So in every game mode, demolition included, and also backfill was added to strike out. So, Human backfill was something that they rolled out in stages. I think they started with 6v6, and then they rolled it out to some of the other uh, game modes. That's whenever it was introduced to Strikeout. I think that they accidentally turned it on for Demolition at that point, but I can't, I can't remember exactly. But I think that they did turn it on for both of them at the same time and just said, eh, it's on, fuck it. We're just going to roll with it. Um, April the 28th, new crossplay and matchmaking changes. So that's when they announced forced crossplay, where they were going to merge all the lobbies together um, across all the different consoles to try to improve the matchmaking and improve the amount of time that it takes to find a match, things like that. That's when that was announced. It wasn't introduced then, but that's when it was announced. Uh, May the 10th was the Rogue Rising update, so we got the new map Vertigo in that. The MVP lineup was introduced. We got dynamic music and dynamic scoreboards. And then, of course, the narrative event, Juke's Gambit, was introduced in that update. May the 23rd, we got another dev talk here, Leaving Open Beta. So you can pull this up, but basically it gives a breakdown of like, we've added X amount of rogues, X amount of maps, this happened, that happened, blah, 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 blah. And the next update, we're leaving open beta. We're releasing the game out into the world. It's going to be what it's going to be, which was happening in the next update, which was the Operation Daybreak update. 
So the May the 25th, they had a post called Dev Talk again, talking about uh, supply drops, explaining what supply drops are, the two different supply drops, and then the rewards that you can get inside of those. And like this was one of those things like it was great that they talked about this and got this out into the world ahead of time. And then they introduced that in the Operation Daybreak update. So like it was kind of perfect the way that they were doing stuff. Um, June the 8th, we got the Operation Daybreak update, which we got the new Rogue Juke. We got the Depot Visual update. Ranked Draft Pick was introduced. They added Strikeout to Ranked, and Crossplay was accidentally enabled in that update. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason... And the reason that they didn't introduce force cross play originally was because the anti cheat wasn't that great. And then they're like, "Well, it got turned on, so the anti cheat's working now." <laughs> it's like, "No, nah, I don't think that that's that's oh, how that works." But yeah, okay. works, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, June the ninth, they did the play with the developers event, and they announced it. June the ninth was a Thursday, and they're like, "Yeah, we're playing on Friday." And it's like, dude, you talked about this Play With Devs event for months leading up to it with no date or nothing. People would have liked to have, I don't know, took off work, you know, like not your entire player base are children. So some people would have liked to have been around for that, especially since they were giving away exclusive titles for people that played with the developers. So you know what I mean? Like, come on now. Uh, June the 21st, they had the RCCS Summer Series signups, and they also introduced the Ladies 2v2 Strikeout Series. Uh, July the 26th was the Revelation update, which was the Fallen Heroes narrative event. The trench visual reworked happened. Gadget cooldown was introduced globally in all game modes. They add Rogue Mastery rewards for 8th and ninth levels. They changed ranked, so you needed a minimum of 10 Rogues to be able to play ranked at that point. As opposed, like with draft pick, it makes sense in case, you know, bands and picks and all that stuff. But that's when they made the fundamental changes to ranked on the criteria needed to get into it instead of being level 10. And then they reworked some of the game modes. So this was when they introduced Sabotage for everybody to play because they were going to be playing it competitively. And then they reworked Extraction and gave it the dodgeball rule set. And then they introduced Strikeout 2.0, which was a worse version of Strikeout if you if you can imagine that. So... Anyway, uh, the September the 7th was the formal affair update. So this was the, you know, the the fashion show update, right? So in this update, well, you got the quick play accidentally was turned on. Like it wasn't supposed to be a thing, but they accidentally made it a thing. Uh, Glacier was reworked. The ranked draft pick improvements happened to where it offsets. So ban, ban, then the, the team that bans first picks one rogue, then two rogues on the enemy team, you know, and back and forth, which still doesn't get the enemy team any type of advantage whatsoever, but it is what it is. Uh, pistol and melee mastery was introduced. Quick, uh, I've got quick play was accidentally added twice there. My bad. Uh, and then Sniper Flinch was introduced. Thank you, Rubio, for reminding me about that. Oh, That's it. Yeah. On September the 13th, we got the Refer a Friend incentive where you could get the Squad Goals Dima. They do this every so often. This was their one time in the year that they could actually make that happen. So we had that. October the 18th was the Walking Dead update. So we got the Bad Actors narrative event. Weekly contracts were added. Quick Play Q Refined, which was rotating game modes. Each week, the Quick Play would have different game modes that would rotate into it. That's when we got the Fixer Rework and the Battle Zone Shop update, where you could buy and upgrade, uh, buy weapons and upgrade perks. And then on December the 13th, we got the most recent update, Mad Mercenaries, which they added ranked contracts. Daily contracts were expanded to include more rogue-specific contracts, and also performance indicators was brought into the game at that point. So that is the entire year of updates for Rogue Company. We have four pages, and I have big font. Like, I've got some of these fonts fairly large. We only got four pages worth of updates of things that were actually impactful to the game completely. Uh, other than, of course, weapon balance, 
uh, rogue balance, things like that. Like I said, if I included all that stuff, this would be like 50 pages. But these are just features that they added into the game, things that they added into the game to make it better across the board. We have one update that happened for matchmaking in 2021, nothing in 2022, uh, nothing about the servers, nothing about any of that stuff except for that communication letter, that dev talk with Dell Flowers, talking about, yeah, the servers are fucked up. We're working on it. We don't know if we're going to be able to fix it or not. Um, a lot of this stuff realistically could have and should have been added in in 2021, in my opinion. Quick play should have been a thing already. Draft pick should have been a thing already when ranked was first introduced. We got yeah. stuff. We got stuff that we realistically didn't need all that much, like the trench visual rework. Like, don't get me wrong, I like the trench visual rework, but it's not a necessity. You know, they added loot boxes into the game with the supply drops, even though they're not loot boxes. They're loot boxes at the end of the day. Didn't really need those. Um, you know, the Walking Dead collaboration, meh. Like, we got the Rambo collaboration, which was great, but The Walking Dead just kind of went over terribly, in my opinion. Um, we finally got Sniper Flinch, but it's almost non-existent, and it's kind of random when it actually procs. It doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. They pulled Depot out of the game, and they did a visual update. That's, like... Mm -hmm. Whenever you're, whenever you have leakers leaking, like, hey, this is going to be the new High Castle, probably, and then we see the work that they did there. That's more than a visual update. That's a complete rework of the map. They could have reworked Depot. Why didn't they take the extra time to make it flow better and play better? Because it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't flow that flow very well. You know. All they did was reskin it. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Favorite thing to do is make reskins. Yeah, right. And if you look through everything here, this is what I'm going to say. We got we got dev talks, we got communications all the way up until that crucial point right here, May the 23rd, dev talk leaving open beta, right? May the 25th, dev talk introducing supply drops. Everything from May the 25th on is just radio silence. They ha they haven't come out and addressed anything. They haven't addressed they haven't said anything about the issues with the game, what people are complaining about, nothing. It's like they released the game into the world. Here, we're out of beta. Go play with the rest of the big boy games. And that's it. Nothing. They've got developers leaving. You know, we've had Gandhi went off to do the Roco Mobile, which I hope that that works out for him. We got Pretty Hair that left to go play Fortnite. So we've got people that are leaving the game. No communication about that whatsoever. Faces of the game, people that have been out there on Front Street since the beginning. No communication about those people whatsoever. We've had terrible updates ever since, other than the Operation Daybreak update, which was the update that came out that brought the game out of an uh, open beta state. Every single update after that has been terrible. It's been issue after issue after issue, whether it be server issues, uh, bugs, inconsistencies in the game, unable to purchase certain things, things that you purchase not working correctly, like all of that good stuff. So it's like... Uh, you know, like what are they doing over there? It's like they're doing the bare minimum, right? Uh, even that, they're probably they have been a very long lunch break. Yeah, right. Happy New Year's, lunch. boys. <laughs> yeah, Happy, Happy New, New Year's, Year. guys. But yeah, it, it it's very interesting to see everything that's laid out in front of you in black and white, and you see that there's nothing. There's been no communication, no nothing, no updates on anything. Whenever the game, whenever the dev talk about introducing supply drops came out, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight updates since then that have <laughs> nothing that realistically brings anything in to the game like we got the trench visual rework we got sabotage we got rogue mastery rewards brought in 
gadget cooldown for gadget spam, which is fine. Like that, that was great. That was the biggest addition, I think, the biggest change that they made. Uh, and then they opened up pistol and melee mastery because Pretty Hair's friends that he plays with after work allegedly wants to be able to use pistols, and it's like. Okay, tell him to use the rogue that has that pistol. Like you have, you have weapon mastery. So what does it matter what pistol they have? It's crazy, especially whenever he's like, "Yeah, we pretty much play strikeout all the time." And it's like, "Well, pick a fucking weapon up off the ground." There's a thousand pistols laying around. Pick one up. I'm like, come on, man. They're they're gonna have to do something major. Like they need to kick off 2024 with a bang. Uh, there needs to like when you look at the update that happened right after the new year, we got um, Umbra right before Christmas, and then right after Christmas we got Glimpse, and then we got the Project Sane announcement. Oh, it's going to help. Nope, it didn't do anything. Like really, it didn't do much of anything. Uh, that's oh, when they yeah. changed. They changed the UI, they changed the armor, they changed um, the maps up a little bit. Like, that was a pretty decent update right after that. I'm hoping that they follow that same thing. They need to come out. They need to explain what's going on. They need to address what Project Saint is, if it's even anything anymore. They need to release a new Rogue or a new map or something like that. They need to do something major in the next update. And, I mean, this is a shorter season. So we'll see if we actually get something like that come out. They what they need to do is they Just need to say something. <laughs> yeah. They need to have the the new development team, the new people that are running the development team come out and be like, "Look guys, we understand we've heard your your c cries and complaints and this is what we're actively doing." Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I I thought it was very interesting if you compare like the 2022 year to the 2021 year, it's night and day because there was so much stuff that they were adding. You know, they did all the TTK changes and then they had to rebalance all the weapons. They introduced a ton of rogues. They introduced a ton of stuff into the game, ton of maps. This year, we got decent feedback. We got decent changes, decent balance, everything like that up until the game left beta. And if you don't care about the game, then that's fine. Just let us know. Let us know that you have no plans of fixing any of the issues or making any gameplay adjustments or balance changes. That way, people that can and will move on. We just hit 2023 while we were doing this. What is the one major thing out of everything, the one major thing that you would like to see them focus on and improve in 2023? Starvers. I was about to say, I was like servers and latency issues. It's the same please, thing I wanted to improve please, last year. Yeah. Please. <clears throat> I would play the game more than I do now. I've dropped off all because of the server and latency issues. Like it feels so bad playing this game and seeing like how slow or how like bad it is. Go play a different game and visibly know the difference. Yeah. You know, so so much that you're like, wow, dude, you like Whoa! I was like, I, I knew I could tell. Like, it's just too much. It's just again, when you're running around corners and you're somehow down, or like you get into those one-on-one -on -one engagements, but somehow they already got three shots on you. Yeah, you don't even know how. Or you, yeah, there's just it happens a lot more times than not, and it shouldn't be like that. And it feels like it's gotten worse. It does, yeah. And then, like, you know, they added all those ex the exclamation mark or the question mark, little uh, errors, just like, so it helps them figure out the data and everything. But, like, uh, again, it's just been popping up more. It's just been more periodically. You know, for something that's supposed to fix it, it looks like it's making it worse. And that happens a lot more with Rogue Company than any other game I've played. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree 100%. And imagine, like, imagine that you hear about this game. The game left closed beta. It's it's out. It's available. You download it. You're like, oh, I'm going to check this out. After coming off of playing, like, AAA titles, and I know that it's unfair to make that comparison, but 
in the in the circumstance of servers, the core thing that runs your game, I don't think that it's an unfair comparison. So when you go from I mean, a, oh. it doesn't even have to be your triple A games. Sorry, I didn't mean No, no, you're good. It doesn't even have to be your triple A games. There's there's plenty of triple A games that are not you know, again, they're not triple A games and they're they run better than that, you know what I mean? Like down yeah. to the two, like Brawlhalla is not a triple A game. That server it runs fantastic. You know, like you don't ever see any bug issues there or glitching or your character like you know, getting stuck in a wall or like your says it's shooting and it's not shooting. Like that's what Rogue Company does, but like you know what I mean? Like that's just one example. That's not even including any other triple non triple A game. I just can't think of right off the moment at the top of my head. Yeah, no, and I, you're absolutely right. I mean, like that is the backbone of what you're trying to build a game off of, and it should be top tier. Like you can forego the way the game looks. You can forego all that stuff as long as the game has good servers and as long as it is is functional and make sense, then people that are interested in it are still going to play it, you know? And at the end of the day, like if you download the game after playing all these other games and you hop in and you're like, why do I keep getting these symbols on the side? Why are my shots not registering? Why am I getting shot behind cover? Why am I hitting the trigger and it's not inputting that I'm hitting the trigger? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a big one. Yeah. (laughs) And then literally in the middle of a fight. Yeah. And then they're going to move over there and they're going to say, oh, this game takes up 26 gigs, uninstall. Let's free that space up a little bit here. You know, it's like, come on, dude. Of course you can't retain a player base because you don't have servers that are functioning correctly. Maybe update them, upgrade them, do something. Maybe not have them in another country across the across the map. Right. So Singapore. Yeah, right. So for episode number 41 of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast, if you want to contribute in any way, we're going to get back to a normal schedule on the next episode. So if you want to contribute, you can hit us up on Twitter at Brocast. You can shoot us an email, broadcast at gmail.com, or you can um, join the Discord server. The link will be in the description down below. There is a place called Broadcast Contributions. So if you have anything that you want to contribute, and we do have some fantastic contributors, so please feel free to join those guys over there. Send us the information. Send us what you want to hear us cover, and we will absolutely get on top of that. But for this episode, I'm here with Co Reed. And I'm here with Griffin. And thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we will catch you guys on the next episode. Have a good one, guys.